Weaving is the interconnection of a warp, which is the long part here, you can see, and a weft, which is the part that goes across. And then you get interwoven threads, which make a fabric. On a loom, you can make any kind of fabric which has an up and down warp and an acrosswise weft. Anything that has those two, two fibers interlocking can be made on a loom. This is a barn loom, which we have at the homestead. It is called that not because they used it in the barn, but because it was built in the same style that barns were built with pegs and dowels and huge timbers. I think that the barn loom was the most prevalent kind because in order to weave, to weave the fabric, you'd wanted to weave it as wide as you could to get as much usable fabric as you could. Every house did not have a loom. There often was a loom for a, quote, neighborhood, or there were weavers who would take this loom apart, put it on their wagon, and go to different places. And then people would bring their finished fibers to the weaver, decide what they wanted to have made, and he would weave it up for them. And they'd come back and pick it up later. Squire Boone, Daniel's father, was a weaver, but he only wove in the winter time. He did not weave in the spring and the summer because they were too busy with the farm, planting and doing blacksmithing stuff and repairing. But during the winter, in order to augment probably their, their money, he would weave. Daniel Boone did not weave. He knew how to weave, but he did not like it. He liked the outdoor things better. To weave, you can weave flax, which is a plant product. You can use the wool that you shore off your sheep in the springtime, and you can use cotton. A warping board is a board, usually square, just with pegs along the side, and you would use it to measure the length of the warp that you would need for weaving and it keeps things in order, not in a tangled mess So when you go to put it on the loom. A spinning wheel is simply a wheel that rotates around and a smaller wheel that collects the fiber that you make. What it does is it takes the raw product from the sheep or the cotton or the flax and puts it into a usable fiber shape. Once you have spun whatever fiber you have decided to use, it's now in the ready process. You can take it to the weaver, decide what you want to have woven, how you want to have it woven, and then he can proceed from there and weave it into the cloth that you want. The client will bring to the weaver the finished fiber. The weaver will then stretch the weft across the loom in the correct pattern, make it taut, and then you use a small shuttle with a bobbin inside of it to throw it across the weft, change your pedal, throw it back the other way, change your pedal again, throw it back. That will cause the interlocking of the threads, which will give you a stable fabric. It would take you a while to get a new garment. You would have to shear the sheep, someone would have to prepare the fiber, someone would have to spin it, and then you would have to take it to the weaver, he would weave it, and then you'd bring it back home and mom would sew it into whatever garment you wanted. The weaving profession was very important in colonial times because there was no ready-made fabric. Only very wealthy people could go to a what they called a general store and buy fabric already woven. It was extremely expensive, so most people would go to the weaver with their threads, have pieces of fabric woven, and then make it into the clothing that they needed.